my friend Jin Jin Kim. He's an executive director of Friends of East River Esplanade. She's a longtime Upper East Side resident. She's a city hall lobbyist. Imagine that. And labor union organizer for the past 15 years. She worked at New York City lobbying firm. She represents a broad based portfolio of clients, including trade associations, not for profit, corporations. Before that, she served as the immigrant rights director for the New York City Central Labor Council, AFL CIO. As a political campaign manager, she was instrumental in getting elected prominent politicians such as Mayor Bloomberg, City Controller John Liu, said Senate Senator Diane Savino, Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright, Elizabeth Crowley, and many others. She's also a stand-up comedian, performing in clubs throughout the tri-state area and regularly at local club The Comic Strip Live. She has a deep, deep love and passion for the Esplanade, which she has a view of outside her window. One of the lucky one. I certainly don't have that view, but she certainly does. And you should see her apartment, gorgeous. And where she walks and jogs almost every day. Well, if I have that view, I would do the same thing. Hey, welcome to Ask Young and Friends. So today's guest, we have Jean Kim, who is my dear friend, who is a comedian, executive director for the Upper East Side Park. I'm just going to say the Upper East Side Park. And she's an advocate. She's a community organizer um, and a whole other thing. So Jean, welcome to my podcast, my YouTube, my everything. Thank you, Hi, Derek. Thank you for having me. Yes, um, I'm um, the executive director also of the Friends of the East River Esplanade. Um, and I was, Esplanade is a difficult word for a lot of people, but it's, um, <clears throat> um, it basically means a uh, waterfront walkway. So, um, so for those of you who've never been it, you should definitely, not, uh, it's from what? From 60th to 120th Street is where we represent. Um, and, um, there's some transformative changes happening on the East River waterfront in that area. Everybody should check it out. By the end of the year, it's going to become the new High Line. It's going to mm. become an East Side waterfront destination. Um, yeah, so um, you heard. So it our bodies, first. our bodies mostly of water. <laughs> so if you are come near water, it's actually very, very good for you. But this show, we're going to talk about uh, how to meet the one. Right, Jean? So, yeah. you okay? You need to get a glass of water or anything? Oh, no, sorry. I'm going to have my coffee. Oh, good. So, he's a she's a night owl because she's a comedian. So, tell me, Jean, how did you meet Tony? What yeah, is it that uh, my you husband do? Is, yeah, my husband is uh, Tony, and uh, we we were friends for 10 years before we got together. Mm. Um, and last year, we were... Um, married on earth day um which is april 22nd and um i was yeah. there it was a great wedding yeah esther was there um we had, <laughs> yeah it was one of those uh pandemic weddings but yeah um, i love yeah, it you have to wear masks and then take it off yeah it was great it was great food was great the lobster was delicious i must have gone back and just keep eating the lobster I didn't care. Yeah, about I know everybody couldn't believe oh the God. lobster tails at the wedding. We were able to have a very um, budget-filled wedding, but still have lobster tails. <laughs> yeah, and the lobster tail was very, very good. If not for nothing, thank you for inviting me to the wedding for the lobster tail. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so Tony and I were friends for uh, ten years before we got together. Mm -hmm. uh, we were. Um, we kind of worked in the same area, not in the same office. Mm -hmm. And um, I always tell people it wasn't until he had a heart attack that I really <laughs> fell for him. Um, you know, because it slowed him down a little, made him uh, self-reflective, took a few pounds off his belly. I tell <laughs> all my girlfriends, if you want a quality guy and one who will genuinely care for you, I suggest finding one who just had a serious heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, I swear um, they'll value every second with you. Uh, and it's harder for them to get away. 
because no. they can't okay. run. But yeah. Tony, you were telling me. I mean, I mean, I've known you for a long time, but you told, uh, you told me that uh, it was love at first sight for Tony, but really not for you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell yeah. me, me. I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we were just, uh, we, we were just, uh, friends for a long time and, you know, it's all about time. A lot of it is about timing Timing. because yeah, you That's know, you true. both have to be at the same place at the same time. Yeah. And not like I always, I always enjoyed his company. We mm. go out for lunch like three times a year because we're both foodies. But, you know, I never really, like, thought about it in any other kind of way. But he told me that when he first saw me, that he always thought that, oh, wow, you know, like, you know, like, he thought that we had a really good vibe together. But, Aww. you know, so, but I found well, you that do, out you day. Yeah, you so. Days. Um, I mean, you know, we recently, I mean, it was Jean's idea. We had a potluck dinner, and that was really good. I mean, I have to say. G, uh, Jean, your lasagna was really good. I mean, you're not even Italian, but it was really good. No, I mean, even my Italian um, husband tells me I make a better lasagna than him. So yeah, no, it was yeah. really good. So <laughs> thank you. Jean made yeah. Jean made her lasagna, and uh, Tony's Italian, but it was yummy. So yeah, it was, it was well, nice I, after the pandemic yeah. for to get together. But, yeah, well, so, I always say that, you know, Italians and Koreans, we actually have a lot in common. I'm still working on a joke around this, but yeah, my nail salon yeah. lady, when I told her that my husband's Italian, she said, oh, that makes sense. You know, she's a Korean woman because she said, oh, you know, um, Italy is, the, um, what what do you say? Italy. Next to South Korea? No. Yeah. She said it. I mean, well, anyway, she said Italy and Korea are very similar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Wow. How is it similar? That it's funny in itself, but how is it similar? They oh, don't need. Yeah. Um, well, we both, well, this is like, you know, we both use a lot of garlic in our cooking. That's like true. Tons of garlic. And um, we both, um, you know, like you have a lot of family style eating. And um, yeah, and, and uh, we both, family oriented too. Like yeah, I think, very you know. family oriented, mm -hmm. and we both like just you know uh, gesticulate a lot with our hands when we talk. Koreans are very like yeah, they, mm. they talk, and you know they tend to be very um, yeah. We have overbearing mothers, but I mean, kind of everybody does. <laughs> My mother um, was very overbearing. I would yeah. come home with. 98 and my mother always said what happened to the other two points i thought wow you're not even grateful that i got 98 but you know but i think that's all asian family too though. yeah i mean that part you know is like a lot of yes but um yeah but there are a lot of similarities and our foods are kind of like similar in terms of like the spiciness factor mm. so um yeah so there are some similarities like it's a good um it's a good fit and but I love your apartment, though. Oh my God, I've never seen like a twelve feet. That's that's huge. The ceiling. Yeah, we have like sixteen feet ceilings because where we live used to be a Christy. woman's. Yeah, it used to be a woman's hotel. So we live in the former lobby of the woman's hotel. That's why the ceilings are so tall. And it was it was really really great that you know. And then you have this gorgeous view of the water. I mean, yeah. Like, I know we have a second floor so, view of the East River. Yeah. yeah, so spacious. Yeah, it is. Um, it is unusually spacious. You know, I've lived in um postage stamp size apartments. You know, mm. most of my life, That's most of my work. adult life in Manhattan. So, um, this apartment is unusual. But it's also the first time I've lived with, you know, a man. You know, it's the first time. <laughs> You know, so I'm like sharing. And Tony's tall. Tony's yeah, tall. Tony's so, tall. So, so it's a good thing that you guys have like 16 feet ceiling. And Tony's tall, you know, really yeah. tall. Yeah, he's six foot three. And um, yeah, we always say that we are best friends first. I believe that mm -hmm. the most important part of a relationship, a long lasting relationship, is uh, being friends. Right. Um, 
Yeah, you need to have that long lasting friendship, that, that mm -hmm. foundation of a friendship mm -hmm. in order for it to be a long lasting relationship. You have to have a lot of, you know, common interests that you like doing together, I believe. So and, always, um, what's a common interest uh, that you and Tony have besides eating out and being a foodie? Uh, we, um, well, we met in, um, you know, in politics, I was a, um, labor organizer. I was an immigrant rights director at the central labor council, which is, the, um, you know, they're the umbrella organization for like, you know, 350 unions in New York city. Right. And he was, a um, officer of the printers union. He was, a <laughs> yeah, he was like the secretary treasurer. So I'd always have to call him, um, and other unions to ask for money for my campaigns <laughs> and, I, and i was doing the immigrant workers freedom ride tony two, give me some cash yeah and this is even before you know we were like you know we we weren't dating we weren't you know had we a relationship friends. or anything yeah um and i would have to call all the political directors and the officers of all the unions and ask them for uh volunteers or mm -hmm. um you know, or money so that we could get buses to go to DC or, you know, different things for our campaign. So, um, yeah, definitely when I was doing the anti Walmart, uh, campaign in 2005, keeping, um, you know, I was an organizer to keep uh, Walmart out of New York city. Uh, I called and I asked him for money and he, um, and he, and he gave me some. <laughs> he is great. You know? That's yeah, John. So. John is great. And also you have some cool friends. I mean, I went to your party, uh, besides the potluck. You know, I went to the party on the for the for the espionage. And I mean you met you have like some famous friends that that were there and that was really nice to see them. And then you yeah. even said my friends are cool friends, which is true. Your yeah. friends are the coolest. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I'm lucky. I have a um, a collective group of friends from all my different uh, walks of life, and um, yeah, and um, and 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 Tony and I, we have in common, um, yeah, politics, labor, um, mm -hmm. and um, and comedy. He comes to all of my comedy shows. He supports, he's a good husband. So yeah. tell me, what made you become? I mean, it's very rare to see an Asian female Asian comedy. I mean, yeah, yeah. with Alice Wong. I mean, Ali Wong and other Margaret people, Cho. You know, yeah, those are the two still, main ones you think of. Yeah, but yeah. what made you become a comedian? I know people ask me that all the time, and um, you know, growing up in Ohio, um, I always wanted to be a, um, a broadcast journalist. So I was a broadcast journalism major at Ohio State. And I got very comfortable car carrying a microphone. Mm. So, um, you know, and it's very competitive being a broadcast journalist because you have to start in like Yuma, Arizona, which is what mm. my teacher always told me. It's like a tiny town where you have to wash the, you know, you have to wash the company car, carry the, you know, the tripod and everything. You know, this is in the old days. And, um, and, and then one day you might be able to make it back to Ohio. And I was like, mm. what? I said, I'm not going to do that route. And um, so mm -hmm. I, so when I, so when I moved to New York city after college, I, I had it on my bucket list that I wanted to do stand up comedy. I mean, and you, I do. Was, every th you, you do it with Joyce, um, with Gladys, sorry, every Thursday, right? Yeah. And um, so I, yeah, so now I run a room with uh, Gladys Simon. She's a, she's been, she's a, she's a uh, comedy icon. She's been mm -hmm. doing it for thirty years, and she um, has mentored people like Jim Gaffigan, who's mm -hmm. uh, has you know who's a famous comedian, has his own Netflix specials, and um, yeah, and a ton of other comics. I mean, I mm -hmm. can't pronounce Zach Gaffigan, you know. You know him. He comes on The Hangover. He came on yep. The Hangover. Yep. Yeah. He but what in... still, you just became a comedian because you think that, ah, I'm just going to do it. And I think that's very... Well, I guess I was kind of like a jokester in mm -hmm. some ways, even though, like, you know, being one of the few Asians in Ohio, I was never right. like the class clown or anything because, you know, I didn't feel comfortable. That was really for most of the white boys in my class mm -hmm. who were like the class clowns. But then... um um yeah and my mom was very funny my mom and my grandma very very funny people 
Mm. And we didn't have any like Netflix or, you know, comedy right. specials. So, but, but that's very rare for a South Korean women, especially your mom and your grandmother to be like very funny. Yeah, so they're very, yeah, but they were just like naturally funny. They weren't doing stand up. They were just like funny. My mom, you know, is a single mother and she was always, uh, my mom is just like a walking character. She just hysterical. I, I, half of my comedy is about her. And I always say the other half is about Tony. And um, <laughs> yeah, and so when Tony asked I know me to Tony, marry- is, Tony is sitting in the room. Hey, Tony, I know sitting in the room and uh, just listening to this. Say hello, yeah. Tony. No, he is actually not here anymore. Where'd he go? Oh, yeah. He went back to sleep? Yeah, he went back to sleep. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. That's okay, it's okay. Yeah. I was just resting no. because I, he has this, oh, yeah. I, I, for the audience, I think he has this rom- bow, I mean, he just like this. Yeah, I, he's a- Horrified voice. Yeah, he's very, Um, he's got a New York accent. I always say that I think I was attracted to him partly because of his big, thick, new york accent and um during the pandemic he asked me to marry him and uh he got down on one knee and he said oh. you want to marry me oh wow <laughs> yeah so <laughs> and um now he's a, and i had to say yes because after all he is 50 percent of my comedy material <laughs> yeah so we can't so, we can't get yeah. a divorce with him yet yeah exactly you know so, because, um yeah what but that's, do with the materials yeah but that's really why i wanted to and then i took a class when i first got to new york city um for stand-up comedy at uh-huh. the american comedy institute uh-huh. and he takes you know you take like four classes and it leads to a performance at the gotham comedy club uh-huh. and that's where i did my uh debut performance wow. and then i did like open mics for one year and then you know at the time especially this was 20 years ago there was like no minorities or no hardly no women even wow. talk about not minorities doing comedy so i just kind of after one year stopped and then i picked it up again in 2015 and now i'm doing it very regularly but, but you're um, very generous too people want to uh be a comedian you suggest it i mean you are like really uh, are very kind people. I mean, you're not like competitive and whatever. Yes. You're very, very good. Yeah. Um, comedy is a very cutthroat um, industry, but um, yeah, we have a very supportive community of yeah. uh, comics and Gladys Simon is, you know, and she's so generous and she's, she's yeah, a Gladys tough, is great. Yeah. And she's like a tough love mother who tells you, fix your hair, do this, wear this. You know, so where and, is it? But it's on Thursday, right? It's Thursday, eight o'clock or seven o'clock? No, Thursday. Um, we do five thirty to seven thirty. It's a, it's our early show at the uh, comic strip. So you do a five thirty show and a seven thirty show? No, we just do one five thirty show, but once a month we do an eight o'clock, what we call the pro show, um, it, which is the which is the prime time show. So, so every Thursday you do it at five thirty. But where where do people find out about the show? Um, through me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How do people find out about you? Oh, they, um, well, if you want to, if you want to come t- to do it, it's kind con- it's the early show is kind of like an open mic, but it's a booked open mic. It's not a kind right. where you can just walk in off the street. No, no, of course they have to book you. I mean, you know, yeah, no, yeah. there are open mics that aren't so great and people just walk off the street and go uh, on, but we, but it's on book Thursday. Them. But they they invited right so Thursday what is it coming where where it's is a it comic again? strip it's a comic strip uh, live comedy club on 81st Street and Second Avenue it's the oldest comedy club in New York City and it's uh it started in 1971 and it's mm-hmm. legendary because that's where Jerry Seinfeld Eddie Murphy and you know er, you know all of those legends started they got their start. so it's yeah. a comic strip on 81st and Second Avenue. Yes, 81st okay. Street and So Avenue. every Thursday yeah. at 5 30. Yeah. But Thank if you, you go so on the much. comic strip website, you could um yeah, you you can, you know, it, so it lists all the shows. You. They can find you there every Thursday at the comic strip, 81st and 2nd. Thank you so much, Jean, for joining us. All right, yeah. love for Tony. Bye, honey.
Okay. See you later. Thank you, Esther. Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye now.